everybody. We will be Ooh. beginning Snowy going up against Flower. What's up? Opening up with a Zol. We've got Cannon and Axe coming up to fight against Flower on the Yumiko. This is a this is a fun matchup because Zol definitely uh, played the the one v one scene for about a year or two and then fell out of favor severely as Cannon became mostly a two's weapon. So this matchup is actually just going to be a blast to watch. And in a sense, with Zol, you do outrange a lot of the traps that Yumiko can set by just holding down Sig and letting the third blast charge all the way through there. So I wonder if that's what Snowy's thinking in this matchup here as we go into game number one. We'll see if that new action transpires. And yeah, I feel like. I've seen a lot of Onyx and I've seen a lot of Zol in twos especially, but that does not matter. Snowy going to be cleaning up that first stock. Flower knocked down to two stocks so early on. And you know what? If it's going to be a repeat of anything that we saw last time, these first two stocks are going to go and then we will actually have a set from there on out. Just yeah, Flower has to, to have two stocks fly in under a minute to formulate a game plan. And then he goes, ah, okay, now I know what I want to do. And he's got a best of five to work with to do it. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here. Although Snowy, look at a little experience with what Flower has to bring to the table. Does lose the axe, picks up the cannon though, however. And if you can get another downlight there, oh, that sidelight doesn't get the dodge read. That's a good amount of damage. And that sidelight, side of recovery, is going to put Flower into a difficult position. Yeah, quite huge now. Flower holding off to center stage, backing off for a second. Not able to trip up Snowy at all. Finding a couple of neutral layers, which is just good damage. Excellent little weapon toss. And that was the right idea. That actually should have just connected. But, you know, it was just a spacing thing at that point. Oh, the down stick actually ends up working out. Combos in the recovery, but not enough force there against Snowy Zol. And Flower putting up the same tactics that worked against Boomy's Impatience are not working against Snowy, where Snowy looks at him and he goes, I know you're standing still because you're trying to react to something that I'm going to do, so I'm just going to stay on the platform and then move when you decide to move. And because Snowy's got the lead, he can absolutely do that. The scoop finally takes him down, but only after Flower took an entire two stocks worth of damage. Yeah, but you know what? He's still holding on to that second stock, and that is what matters most at this point, especially if he is just able to play that untouchable neutral. If he's just able to space people out just like that, you, you, you know, winning by a thousand cuts at that point. But... That being said, Snow, we're going to be cleaning up that second stock and now solidifying an even better lead for himself. I think we're starting to lean more towards that 3-0 prediction that you were talking about. I hope that's not the case because I can just see how well Snowy is versed in Flower's game plan. Like, this is looking like a much bigger struggle for Flower than it was against Boomy. And now we'll have to see if he can get that adaptation. Puts out the down signature. Snowy just flies right above it by using the cannon side air for momentum. And these sidelines are just catching Flowers in the oh. air. Nice job with that side air. Goes for the recovery. And he was just trying to take out that stock in a flash. Okay, Flowey backing off a little bit. Going to be looking through that delay, but I've got to say, do not underestimate last stock, Flowey, because that's what happened last time around, isn't it? Okay, dashing in there, looking for the side who doesn't find it quite yet. Slowing down the game plan, and that's basically an unreactable weapon toss. You jump in there, you toss down the weapon, it's at a point where it's way too close to dodge. Yeah, and sometimes, even if it is reactable, you dodge it, and then you're like, oh no, my dodge is gone for whatever follow-up that's going to be coming after unarmed. Flower gets hit by the recovery, okay. stage spiked off the bottom of Fortress of Lions, and that's going to be game one uh, convincingly going over to Snowy. This is going to be defined by the game two. The game two is actually what is going to set the tone for the rest of the set. The game one, you know, Flower is just going to need that one to adjust. But what we did actually see is Snowy responding, just as you mentioned, really well to Flower's passive game plan whenever he just basically sits there and waits um, and dashes in and out. When he's not choosing to press a button like that, Snowy's doing the best possible option, which is, as you said, either wait as well, make him not react to anything if you don't have anything to give, or you jump in there and go in with an unreactable weapon toss or one where it's not even fatal to dodge in that position. And so I want to see what Flower is able to do in that position as well. So if he establishes that he's not doing anything, what do you think is something that he should do after? I think that you should probably stop going for that option in general. So I'm thinking what I'm what I'm noticing is there was a lot of adaptations that Flower made when fighting in that set against Boomy that I feel like he's trying to apply to this different player that is Snowy, and all of them didn't work right off the bat, and it's just kind of like, okay, you're just playing a different player now. We, and I think he's taking that time after that game where he literally was just sitting there, head down, looks like he's meditating a little bit and considering, okay, everything that I did, wasn't working, it's time to try something. You gotta else. go blank slate, right? Because if you started with that blank slate and you molded it around Boomy, that same mold is not going to work against uh, Snowy as well. So you gotta go blank and then you'll be able to start from the ground up. So, that being said, we will be jumping into game two shortly. I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, and of course, the hope for me is not for anybody to like win or lose, but it is for us to just see the upsets happen. And if Flowey is the one that is channeling those upsets, Three, two, then I'd like to see that happen. One. Yes, Whoa. and it would be really exciting to see Flower take his first competitive game off of Snowy, <laughs> let alone the set, right? Because so far, Snowy is looking fantastic on the Zol. Winner of this uh, is going to go into top 32. Loser of this is out of the tournament at 33rd. So a lot on the line here for this best of five that Snowy has started off quite convincingly. Gravity Cancel Endlight is a good start to punish that stop from Flower. But Flower makes it back with a scoop. 
Can he get anything else off of this? No, the dare. Okay, oh, wake no. up, stomp. But does it get the follow-up? Because I think he didn't expect it to actually connect. Yeah, didn't expect this to connect and then just faded back with the new trillion and wasn't able to get the side hitbox of it. Flowey now, bow on hand. This is exactly what he does best, which is just to make the ground as unsafe as possible and catch these jumps. Holding onto the ground, holding onto the ground. Snowy doesn't need to land. He can just chill on that platform up until Flowey takes that space away from him. Goes in there with the recovery and dealing quite a bit of damage. That Axider does come through. Snowy commits to the down and puts himself off stage and Flowey uh, Flowey takes advantage of it by picking up the hammer. Okay, one stop here comes through, tries to go for that pivot uh, down air, but Snowy just dodges right back onto the stage to be able to pick up a weapon, and Flower doesn't get the edge guard. Falling side air beaten by Snowy side air, and Snowy chases him all the way around. Flower just gets right back to the stage. He's looking for that stomp once again, and that side uh, side light pivot nair of all things catches Flower off guard, and that's another one of those situations where I actually think he is giving Snowy space and comfort of mind every time that he tries to do that stop, wait, and react thing. Every time that he's gone for that, Snowy looks at him and goes, what are you doing that? And ends up beating him at his own game. And in fact, Snowy did go off stage and actually overcommitted against Flower, mm -hmm. and Flower kind of let him get back on and he went to center stage instead of continuing pressure in the corner. Yes. That being said, guess what? We've even up, evened up the stock count. Anything can happen at this point. Yes. This is going to be the definitive game too. This is a very, very big difference from game number one, right? Because in that situation, Flower ended up being in red down a stock against Snowy, so Snowy was able to play a much different game plan. And here now, they're vaying for the same amount of stage control. Uh, and the person who takes the next stock here is going to be at a huge lead. Oh, Sideline comes through. That was so good. The down sig da dash through. That's right. He just yeah. made all this ground impenetrable and said, hey, you don't want to land. Who you want to land in front of it? Nope. And then just completely denied that space in front of him, too. He is manipulating space around him. Yeah, Yumiko, fortunately, immune to her own magic, right? So she's able to put that trap down, then dash right through it, get the side light, and that down to comes through, combos into that side air, and the end barely dodged out of the way by Snowy. Flowey's, uh, Flower's not able to get that ground pound there onto Snowy, but still a good amount of damage coming through. But against a nine base force legend like Zol, uh, Flower... He's at risk of going down to about any side air here. What an anti what a catch. But Zol just able to hang on there. And now Snowy looking for a way to get back down. Almost punished for extending in with that side air. And now Snowy looking for that neutral light. Not going to be able to find it quite yet. Flower with a hammer on hand. And okay, it's every not working. Every time it's not working. It's, every time that I see a post up, I'm like, Flower, stop doing that. Snowy's literally better at reacting to you in this situation. The recovery comes through. And he boxes out Flower's attack with that neutral light and takes the lead once again off of a similar situation. Flower needs to equalize the stock count, and Flowey needs to stop going through those weights. Snowy is not Boomy. These are two different opponents that you have in front of you. Gets that new trailer off now, going through the bow. Is this going to be it? Is that going to be it? No, not quite yet. Just still going to be setting up a juggle, looking for the recovery. Flowey needs to close out the stock now because Snowy is getting a lot of extra credit, getting a lot of mileage Ooh. out of this lead. Oh, and oh, then no. the downer comes through. Snowy could go for the D-Light ground pound right now. Flowers on a dodge for three seconds because of that gravity cancel. And lights him back to the stage, showing that he doesn't even really care about going for the it's weapon. Gonna it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again and again. He walks to the side of the stage. And the stutter stepping from Snowy is showing that he's like, yeah, if you're going to keep going for this in this game plan, I'm going to show you exactly how much better I am at playing against it. Goes for the weapon throw it afterwards. And Flower does get the recovery, but Snowy looks unfazed. Snowy looks unfazed, but I know what Flower is capable of in neutral at this point in time. I know how he can play keep away. I know how he can keep up that pressure and make it impossible for his opponents to land. And the question is, will he be able to do that now? Huge damage coming out. Not able to get that next down and coming through, picking up the bow and Snowy desperate for a weapon now. Yeah, that stomp side that would have gotten so much extra damage for him. Gets the end light, gets the nair. Okay, landings are being covered, but a falling sider from Snowy here, even on the cannon, would be huge. And he's looking for it. There it is. Falling sider takes him off the left side of the stage. He knew how much damage he had on him. He's like, okay, I can take maybe about 10 or 12 hits, but the one hit that I get is going to give me the win. And Snowy goes up 2-0 in the set. Okay, so that game two wasn't as dominant in Snowy's favor as I thought it was. And I think the only thing that Flower needs to do going into game three is cut it out with those weights. That is the thing that is consistent. We failed, have seen like five it, it openings. Has failed 100% of the time. We have seen all of them like uh, fail in game one. We have seen all of them in game two as well, right? And just, Snowy's just better at it too. <laughs> like he's done it a few times, and and then towards the end of that game, uh, he was showing uh, that he was just starting to initiate mm -hmm. that situation too. Because so far it had been all on Flower, and then after a while, Snowy was like, "Okay, I'm going to do this to you, and I'm going to show you how it's done." Uh, and it ended up making that last stock particularly painful for Flower. So now Flower back against the wall, loses one more, and he is out of the tournament at 33rd. Winner of this going into top 32. There's a lot on the line. There's a lot at stake. And this still 
feels within the realm of doability because this is not a total shutout. What is actually happening at Kiryu is one habit, one tendency that Flowey has is being exploited. When it comes to every single other part of the game, man, Flowey's juggling, Flowey's advantage tape, two, all of that one, is equally scary, four. and his traps with his signatures are just as effective. Yes, and so it's interesting to see that it's like, because you're talking about like when it comes to the actual neutral interactions, we're seeing these down airs and the recoveries. We're seeing him go down for the scoops right afterwards when the down ticks put out. He's tacking on a ton of damage to Snowy. It's just when it comes time to take out the stock that he's ending up being a little too predictable and Snowy's able to get the upper hand. Yeah, especially with some of those side six, right? That's basically the person that's like, hey, I really want to get this KO now. I'm going to side six across the stage, and it does not pan out that way. But Flowey at the moment, trying to once again catch all these landings. Snowy sweating, uncomfortable right now. And, and look at this. Every single time, Snowy cannot get to the ground without taking a hit. Oh, yeah, but that time, Flower goes for a hard read on the gravity cancel down stick, and Snowy's able to get a good two hits. Nice Here's spacing. Comes through, does avoid getting blasted by that attack. Snowy with the falling stare, however, will Put Flower up the left side of the stage. One more side arrow. This side of the stage, that will knock out. No, no dodge for a while. Puts up the down to full charge. Gets all three blasts. Goes for oh, the Zeus okay. throw and the pick up Dare, and that's going to be the knockout for Snowy. Flower, two stocks left. Pretty good lead, and you do not want to go down a stock in game uh, three like this because we have seen Flower struggle a little bit when it comes to getting those finishing hits. That being said, immediately. Look at that. Again, Coverage just through. baiting the high recovery and then able to get the capitalization and the down and not able to touch the side of the stage in time. That was masterful. Yeah, that was really great, great positioning from Flower there because the recovery would have caught Snowy if he drifted, but made it so that if Snowy went for the down air at all, he was not going to be able to reach the stage. And now Flower with a great combo gets the recovery right after that chase dodge. Has Snowy at the left side of the stage and Snowy barely dodges through all three of the attacks coming out from Flower there, but that down light side air will bring him to orange and light to cover the landing. And Snowy retreats to the platform where he's had the most success from so far, but a weapon throw has to disengage that situation, and now the axe has been picked up, and we haven't been seeing him rack up damage too well on the axe, and this has been all oh. flower until that side are connected. I like that commitment too, right? Because if it hits, it hits, and it was so close to actually connecting and sending Snowy into an awful position offstage. Hammer in hand yet again. Flower slowing down. This time not actually going to be punished for it, though, but every time I see that happen, I get nervous. Stomp into side are not going to connect because Flower didn't lean into it, ended up drifting back a little bit, only jumped in place. Oh. And now, okay, love that side let. That's just a get off me option. Yeah, gravity cancel sidelight from Snowy off the side of the stage. Oh, no, Flower, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, it worked. He gets his first knockout off of waiting there on the side of the stage, reacts for when Snowy comes back onto the stage, and that's going to be the lead. This is the biggest lead that Flower's had against Snowy all day. You know, maybe you don't even have to stop doing that. Just doing it like 80% less at least makes a little, oh. I think okay. an edge guard puts it more in your favor, too, when eventually you have to come back to the stage. But yeah, on stage, not so much. That being said, I mean, Flower could just, you know, have been losing a lot of 50-50s. It's hard to tell. So far, he's been Sometimes great Sometimes you this just game. flip heads five times in a row. That's okay. true. Right, and there he gets his first tails, and that might be the motivation that he needs to be able to get uh, uh, into a game four scenario here. Okay. If he wins this, this could be the first w like, game win over Snowy competitively. Yeah, <laughs> which in of itself oh. is a huge achievement, and right now, Flower is able to get out there, able to weapon get the down, and the weapon That's toss it. is not even needed. Flower is keeping himself in it. He is keeping himself in the set, and that is the first game in all of the four sets that he's played against Snowy that he has actually won for okay. himself. We have a set toss. Gets on the scoreboard. Yeah. So here we go. Forges of Lions, game number four here. Flower just off the back of his first win over Snowy in a mm -hmm. game is trying to find his first set victory over Snowy as well to get into top 32 here at BCX. Snowy on the Zol going up against Flower, who's been playing Yumiko better than anybody else that I've seen play, pick the legend before. This uh, might be one of the best Yumiko performances I've ever seen myself. I mean, it's probably just the best one, considering that at worst it's 33rd at BCX, right? And that is pretty darn good. Flower getting hit by that weapon throw to pick up Downlight, though. We'll bring him to Orange. Okay. And so far, this game is starting out to look exactly the same as it was playing before. Yeah, looking exactly exactly the same, and Soul's damage output is ridiculous. Look at all that knock knockback from the side. Who has no dodge off stage. The weapon toss has a bit of insurance to get back on. Waiting, being nice and patient. Doesn't actually catch that jump with the side. But that's going to be it. That's going to be that stock. Yeah, that's D-Light and Air, bread and butter combo coming out from the cannon. And when you have that much damage onto your opponent, it's always going to work out. And now we have possibly an even worse game state than before, right? Where Snowy just now being put into deep yellow. Uh, but the neutral light catches the landing there, and Flower just cannot seem to get a single hit in. Finally gets into that jungle state, but Snowy lands, puts up the end light, doesn't punish the gravity cancel down light, but doesn't really need to have a hurry to do so. Has already bought Flower to the same amount of damage that he has on his first stop. This is not the character that you can go hit for hit with. You cannot go hit for hit with Zol's axe, but that is going to be the that ground pound, and that is going to be the stock. Oh. Flower did not take as much damage as he nearly could have,
Pound that almost got awful. Only I mean, in the yellow, it could have been a lot worse. And that's the power of Bow Ground Pound, right? You have all that startup and that slow distance, but when you get that move to connect, you're already low on jumps. You're not making it back to the stage, and Flower, only in orange now, avoids the down signature from Snowy, but does dash up into the sidelight from Snowy, putting that out there as an anti-air. Does get one neutral light, and I think that's going to be it. No, sidelight comes Ooh. through, but he got the stuff recovery. Is that it? The stock's oh, just no. gone. What a commitment. Oh, no. And that was such a beautiful play from Snowy as well. Just saying, hey, you're not going to get away with that against me. Able to get that spike and able to get that stock. And now we have the same exact lead as before. And the amount of neutral lights that are connecting, Flowey is struggling to match this damage output that Zol has. Yeah, side light, neutral light coming through, but he's going to need so much more of it. And just like you said, you cannot go blow for blow against a character like Zol, especially with Yumiko's force stat, right? And so Flower already dipping into that force stance to have a little bit more. He is starting to get the hits. Good Once way. Snowy hits one down light, three down lights, Flower basically has only even up the damage of the stock deficit. Snowy and CQC is absolutely absurd with Axe. So had all these different neutralizers, all these different delays connecting, and now this is great. Snowy isn't even trying to get closer to Flower in that moment. The only thing that could have possibly connected was that neutralizer. It's a good amount of damage. Nice weight coming back down with the downer. Oh, oh no. Sidelight and air connecting, and that might be it. Another sidelight and air comes through, and Snowy now just needs a side air. Down air connects to punish that side, side signature, and Flower looking for something to get started here. Gets the stop there. Okay, edge guard comes through, puts to the down to debate Snowy, but Snowy goes right above, goes for a weapon throw and makes it back to the stage. D-Light recovery, that's going to be it. And Snowy wins over Flower, 3-1, to one, continues the win streak, bumps it up from a 4 to a 5, and gets in the top 3-2. But what an amazing run coming out from Flower here at BCX. Yeah, he played incredible. Snowy did exactly what he needed to do. And what I am just curious about is how was he able to connect so many GC and just regular grounded neutral lights? Because he just kept getting them over and over again. And yeah. Axe, in general, is the kind of a weapon that's like, hey, this thing is not going to deal long extended combos. If you're going hit for hit with Axe, Axe is the one that's going to come out on top. If you're going...